John 10, 30. My Father and I are one. That explains everything to me. And in the next verse that I have written down just below it on a piece of paper of mine that I save for all scriptures that God wants me to save, it says in John 13, 45, And he who sees me sees him who sent me. Which means they are still one. One in what? One in the God presence that they are alone of great God deity in us. So you have to know that when God was here alone by himself, he was still Jesus, the Son of God, Jehovah. But at the same time, he was still himself separate in the presence of one God alone still with great God, Jehovah. And the holiness of who he is and who he was at that time had not been sent down here yet because Jesus' work was not done. So when Jesus left for the last time to be on this earth the way he was over 2,000 years ago, he became a man first, God in the flesh, which means he was God in the flesh, meaning flesh alone first. Then he was born through the womb of his mother, Mary, and then God sent him the holiness of who he was as God's son alone. Through the Holy Spirit, he sent to Jesus the Holy Spirit himself. And when he sent the dove that flew down and landed on top of Jesus' head when he came up out of the water after he was baptized by John the Baptist, that meant for the first time that mankind could see him and realize him and confess him as God alone in the flesh, that he was indeed the Savior, the Redeemer, God of all, the Messiah, the great God Messiah who was sent by God Jehovah to be our Savior and God of this world. Now that's a meaningful moment for all who just has simply said, well, he was just a prophet, a man. No, he was God himself in the flesh, but only after he was baptized with water by the Baptist John himself, he came up out of the water and God sent a beautiful dove to land upon the head of Jesus. And even John spoke, oh my goodness, this is truly the Son of God. And that was a well-meaningful spiritual way of saying to John the Baptist that Jesus Christ was now God too in the flesh. But not alone, because God Jesus was with him also. And now the holiness of who he was then and still is today, the Holy Spirit was now also set upon him at that moment in time on his head and shoulders, and then went throughout his whole entire body, which means that in the pointedness about, about who he was at that moment in time when he rose up out of the water and confessed to God Jehovah that his ministry had begun, God Jehovah said, I am well pleased, my son. And therefore the people around him, including John the Baptist, didn't know exactly what was said. For they thought it was like thunder in the sky when there was no clouds. But it was God Jehovah's voice telling Jesus, This is my son. I am well pleased with whom he is as my son alone. And those words are of, spoken of him in the Bible better than what I can quote them right now. But at the same time, it's close to the meaning about who God Jehovah is and was at that moment in time in the life of Jesus Christ, his only son, who would bear witness to this world our life down here for us alone because you see we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God so therefore not one of us can ever be a savior let alone a God too no one else can be ever be a God ever for God Jesus is sin free always has been and always will be so God Jehovah and God the Holy Spirit they are all sin free they are pure living one God deity alone but yet three separate in the presence of one God alone still. So that's the ending of this chapter for, for today, right now. But in the moment of meaning of truth about who Jesus Christ is, I'm going to say it this way one last time for this sermon right here. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He was God himself in the flesh. He died on the cross for the world's sins and he was risen from the dead in three days. And he did help rise himself from the dead in three days because he could do that he was God too, in the flesh, but nevertheless, he was God in spirit, the first man in the flesh to become acquainted about who he was and how he was and what the flesh was like without God living with him through the holiness of who he was at that moment in time in heaven. But when he returned to heaven, 
on that third day when he was risen from the dead and he rose, him, rose himself from the dead too, from the underground beneath where he was at for three days and three nights to witness to many people who have had who had doom dwelling in them, he went there to save them from their own sin and told them that now they had hope through the blood loss of Jesus Christ from his body that dwelled within him, that was pure and holy. And the sinful way that they were at that moment in time when they died, and even when they were on this earth, if they weren't that sinful, they were even more so when they died, they had no place to go. So they went into kind of like an abyss place situation, which is not a nice place to be, because they didn't know how to sacrifice anything unto God Jehovah and God Jesus to ha have them forgive their sins. At that moment in time in life in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ had not been sent yet. So for us, you and me alone, it's so easy just to say and ask Jesus Christ forgiveness for our sins and have it done just like that. And the meaningfulness of all of this put together just simply says that Jesus cared enough and loved enough all of us that he sent himself to that cross that God Jehovah sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for the world's sins. And that's how much he loved us at that time and forever in infinity. And if you turn him down now because he died on the cross and you can't believe that he rose himself from the dead in three days because he is God too with God Jehovah and the holiness of who he is and was, the Holy Spirit, then you have no place to go when you die. So what happens to you when you place yourself in that position? You have no place to go when you die on this planet. So you'll go to that same place where these people were with no hope, no infinity in heaven with God Jesus, Almighty God Jehovah and God the Holy Spirit as one but separate in three presence of one God still. You'll be here for life, for eternal life in this place we call home. It's not home. It's an earth that's destroyed. It's an earth that's destroying itself from the inside out. It's garbage filled and it's sin filled. And God Jesus and God Jehovah said, we will make a new heaven and a new earth and it shall be, therefore, all under us and behind us and never before us again. And therefore, when God Jesus said, it is finished on the cross before he gave up his spirit to go home, to be with these people who had not been saved from before his time being on this earth and dying on the cross for the world's sins, he said, it is finished, meaning, therefore, we can now live a life eternally and in heaven with God Jesus and God Jehovah forever. Praise God Jesus for that. God bless this day and God bless you for this moment in time. Sit down, pray and ask God Jesus forgiveness for all of your sins. Con confess them all. Ask him forgiveness for all of them and ask him to give you faith to increase your heart to be with him more on a daily basis to believe God exists and that God Jesus is God too with God Jehovah. And they are all one God alone Yet three separate in presence, but one God alone still. And that includes the Holy Spirit. I claim that in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. Amen. God bless.